Kissington, all well, 2020. And next Thursday, the 21st, is Ascension Day. And of course, we should have all the well dressings up. This is Hall Well, the life giving water. And of course, in 2020, with COVID 19, an empty village. A completely empty village. A couple of walkers there. We're applying the flag for last Friday's VA, VE Day. Welcome to this special Ascension Day service for Tissington at St Mary's. My name is Carolyn MacDonald. I'm the priest in charge of the Peak Five group of parishes. It's so sad that we can't meet together in person, but we were determined to celebrate this great feast of the Christian year and not to let Tissington go without some element of its special day. So with the help of many people, and I'll be giving many thank yous at the end, we welcome you to this special service. We're going to start with the usual prayer from our service order. Please join in with the Alleluia at the end. We have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Alleluia! Alleluia. And now we're going to sing our first hymn, which is, O oh God, our help in ages past. Come to our time of confession and absolution. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We say together, if you have the words available, if not, just open your heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. 
grant, O merciful Lord, we pray to your faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So before Duncan Ballard, our area dean, comes to speak to us, Amanda Marshall is going to read to us from the Bible, Acts chapter 1. Acts 1, 1 to 11, the promise of the Holy Spirit. In the first book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by, ma by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you've heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The Ascension of Jesus. So when they'd come together, they asked him, Lord, is this a time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he'd said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, happy Ascension Day. My name's Duncan Ballard and I'm area dean of around here and Vicar of Ashbourne, a town about five miles south of Tissington. And I think this is my fourth well dressing here at Tissington. And I do know how much this festival means, not only to the village who raise a lot of money, all of which goes to charity, but also because of what Ascension Weekend means to the folk around here in terms of history and heritage and identity. After all, it's been celebrated here for hundreds of years. And of course, the well dressing means a lot to you and to all the visitors who come every year. But of course, you can't come to Tissington this year because we're all in lockdown. So what can this Ascension Day offer to us, secluded in our own homes, separated from one another? Well, the Ascension of Jesus is a peculiar day in the Christian calendar. In this topsy-turvy world, most of us don't know which way is up anyway. Here's a lovely medieval depiction of the Ascension. I guess the idea that Jesus ascended to a God up there is too strange to credit. Some people may still live in a three-story universe, heaven above, earth between, hell below, but few people believe that if you get into a spaceship and fly far enough, you'll find a place called heaven. So what are we to make of Jesus' Ascension? Of course, it's not out of the question that Jesus defied gravity, but is that the real point? Is the ascension about gravity or spirituality, geography or vocation? At the end of the account in Acts, Jesus is lifted up and the disciples are left gazing into the heavens until an angel says, why do you stand looking toward heaven? The angel promises that Jesus will return. But even that's not the point. The point is that the disciples' mission and our own is right here, in our own time and place, right where we are. You see, I think what Ascension gives to us is perspective. Rising to the clouds gives us a broader perspective on our lives and the planet. Rather than concentrating on ourselves and on our own personal well-being, Ascension challenges us to bring heaven to earth to live Jesus' values in our own world, even in lockdown. When we live from a higher perspective, 
we can rise above our own self-interest to embrace all people, friends, family, strangers, enemies, all alike. Ascension invites us to rise above everything that constrains us, imprisons us, and see a new world through God's eyes. So, on Ascension Day, we are called to go up, to find higher ground, not to escape Earth's crises, but to gain a vision and a mission that is larger than ourselves or of our communities. We don't need to look to the heavens to find inspiration. The ever-present God is right here, giving us all the guidance and inspiration we need if we can but look beyond ourselves. Our mission is here, to heal, to embrace, to welcome and to love. We don't need to wait for a far off day for perfection. If God is always with us, then right here and right now is when heaven touches earth. Amen. So before Alan Griggs leads us in prayer, let's sing one more time. Rejoice, the Lord is King. My name's Alan Griggs, Agricultural Chaplain in Derbyshire and Curate to the Peak Five. I'm going to lead us in some prayers. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth even to the end of the ages, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. When I say, Lord, hear us, please respond. 
Lord, graciously hear us, as it is on this slide. Let's pray. God of love, as we celebrate the ascension of our Saviour Jesus Christ, we also ascend as pilgrims and seek a broader perspective which brings heaven to earth, taking us beyond ourselves to embrace others as Christ embraces us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, God Most High, thank you that you are praying for us and the world. We pray for all nations in these uncertain times, for nations to work together for the common good of all humanity, for governments and those making decisions, give them perspective and divine wisdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, God Most High, thank you for the gifts given to us to work in your service. We pray for all those working to save lives and build caring and compassionate communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, God Most High, thank you through the spirit of life, truth and grace, you are with us here on earth. Comfort those who know the painful separation of death at this time and are mourning the loss of a loved one. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of our making, we praise you that both heaven and earth are full of your glory. And as the waters of life continue to flow in this time of uncertainty, lead us by your Holy Spirit to proclaim afresh the good news, responding to human need by loving service, transforming unjust structures of society and safeguarding the integrity of creation. Draw us deeper into the deep wells of your truth to ascend to higher ground where all can worship you. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So before we sing our next hymn, all creatures of our God and King, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
our service in church comes to a close. May I send you with God's blessing out into our virtual pilgrimage and walk around the village to see the wells. God the Father, who has given his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, who passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the Church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you carry on your hearts now and evermore. Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn before we go out and it's one I'm sure we all know. We plough the fields and scatter. So now we've arrived at the hall well, right in the centre of the village, a source of water and life for all the folk who have lived here over all these centuries. Just imagine what this well has seen, all of life. Young children playing in the waters, young couples courting, then marrying in the church just up yonder, the everyday business of earning a living and making a crust, and then those sadder events as the funeral procession slowly moves past to the church still a constant anchor on the horizon of the village. And through all those centuries of life continuing, the hall and the village working, living together, this well has witnessed it all, bringing refreshment and life itself. 
So easy to get dragged down by this lockdown business. I don't know about you, but right now, I'm just longing to reach out to that well and scoop up some of that life-giving water. But I know there's something even more refreshing, more life-giving, even than this well. Jesus said, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give you will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give you will become a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Lord, give us this water. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to bless this well. In the days to come, may it bring comfort and refreshment and life to this village and all who come to its waters. But Lord, bless also this day the places where we live. May we draw upon you the source of all living water and bring comfort, refreshment and life to all those around us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is sad that the present restrictions due to COVID-19 have prevented the residents of Tissington from beautifully decorating the village wells in the customary manner. But Heavenly Father, as we give you thanks and praise at this well under the shade of the yew tree, we ask that you sanctify this underground fountain of water with your heavenly blessing. Amen. Some words of scripture from the prophet Isaiah. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Gracious and loving Lord, as we ask your blessing upon this town well, we pray that its waters will continue to flow and that we will continue to let your love flow through us in all our thoughts, words and actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Coffin Well This well, set in the beauty of a garden, yet shaped like a sarcophagus, reminds us of life and death. The life-giving love of Jesus, the living water offered to each and every one, life-giving love that is eternal love, eternal life. In the midst of this global pandemic, in which many people are suffering, many have died, and others are left hurting and bereft, give us courage in these days to quench our thirst for Jesus, the fountain of living, life-giving water. As we give thanks for and ask your blessing upon the water from this well, we pray that we too may be agents of your living water, offering faith, hope and love to all. Amen. And so we make our way around the rest of the village. We come away from the coffin well and we climb the hill. It's quite a long way, but such beautiful views across the fields. It's such a rural village, so beautifully kept. It's all part of the Tissington estate. And we come past the butcher's shop and up past the Methodist chapel. Further on, I hope you can imagine basking in the sunshine. Of course, this year you won't have sore legs from walking up the hill. And we come round the corner at the top of the hill and come back down again towards the hands well. But before we have that blessing, shall we join together and sing as pants the heart.
reflect on the life-giving waters at Hanswell in this time of uncertainty and worry. Perhaps the name of this well reminds us of the importance of clean, safe water to simply wash our hands to protect us from harm. We ask God's blessing on those working hard to make clean water available. And at this well, God's blessing for the cleansing waters of eternal life to flow into us here now, our neighbours, our nation and countries around the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we linger by this well, we thank God for education and learning. We ask his blessing on all young people and their teachers, and all those who work in and support education. We remember those who have missed examinations because of COVID-19, and ask that we may all feel your guidance at this difficult time. Bless us all, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we watch some past well dressings and we see the beauty of creation, the cleverness of the people who design and the perseverance of the people who petal and push all of these wonderful natural things into the clay for our enjoyment. I'd like to thank some of the people who have been so instrumental in helping to get this video put together, this service and the pictures. So a special thank you to Sir Richard Fitzherbert, to Reverend Duncan Ballard, Reverend Tim Morris, Reverend Stella Mills, Reverend Nigel Mode, and Reverend Magina Road, Reverend Amanda Marshall, Reverend Alan Griggs and Kobe Griggs, and the Carr family who worked so hard to lead our singing Margaret Carr on cornet, Crystal Helland on cornet, James Carr on baritone, Stephen Carr on B-flat bass, Catherine Carr on flugel, and Edward Carr on bass trombone. We thank Martin Davis for his advice, and we thank, as ever, St Mary's Church PCC and the whole village of Tissington, so well cared for that we might come and enjoy our time in this very special treasure of a place. Here I am at Hall World in Tissington again, and we look forward to welcome everyone back to Tissington for World Dressings in 2021 on Ascension Day next year, which is Thursday the 13th of May, where we'll have this well dressed and all the other ones, the other five or six in this village for 2021. We'll make it a very special occasion then. Stay safe.